This is a production of the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Unfiltered here, HardwayHQ.com, via the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. You'll find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and the vast majority of podcasting applications, as well as the aforementioned HardwayHQ.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter, HardwayHQ, Instagram, at the HardwayHQs, if there's any other one. Advertising concerns, hate mail, John, at HardwayHQ.com, that's J-O-N, at, don't actually write at, use the A with the circles around it. Cool gimmick, cool shtick, cool deal, baby. John, at HardwayHQ. Dot com. I'm John Harder here in the beautiful, luxurious Hardway HQ Studios. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Unfiltered. Um, you know, the last several weeks, I, I know I, like, I keep joking, like, we've been doing some serious stuff with Unfiltered, uh, some, some interesting, serious topics, and this week I kind of want to scale back a little bit, and I want to talk about a, a project that not really a project, but it's a personal little passion thing of mine that I've wanted to do and I've been working on for the past year plus, and uh, it kind of ties into what we're going to talk about today on Unfiltered. Um, I've been working on this thing called the DVDs of Honor, and uh, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to collect every Ring of Honor DVD from 2002 to October 25th, 2008, when uh, during the whole Gabe Sapolsky era of Ring of Honor, and I'm, I'm a quarter of the way there. I, I've been lucky. I've had some great people help me uh, with, with DVD lists. I have a, I, I believe it or not, I have an ROH DVD guy. So that's that's hysterical. But you know, we've been we've been collecting, and uh, we're starting we're starting small. Like I've I've gotten uh, basically all of the survival of the fittest and uh, race to the top tournament, all that stuff. And I, I've been collecting 08, 07 stuff. But, but uh, along the line, you start getting some older DVDs. You start getting into the 2004s. And I kind of wanted to talk about this today because it, it does have a little bit of a life lesson. And this is the home of independent culture, HardwayHQ.com. And I wanted to talk about um, an event from May 22nd, 2004. Uh, and Ring of Honor fans, old school Ring of Honor fans know what that is. And that is indeed Generation Next. Uh, Generation Next, which was the basis of, in my opinion, the greatest group in Ring of Honor history. And yes, that includes the Elite. Yes, that includes the Embassy. That includes uh, Scum. Generation Next is the greatest group in Ring of Honor history for a multitude of reasons. And the idea of this that came together was, uh, it was... You know, the, the spring of 2004 for Ring of Honor, very tough time. Very tough time. Uh, the R of Video Ring of Honor split. I'm not here to talk about why that split was happening. But um, Carrie Silken, who became the majority owner of Ring of Honor, and R of Video split in a way. And a lot of the guys, because of the incident, uh, TNA in particular, pulled the majority of their talent. Guys like AJ Styles, who was the first Ring of Honor Pure Champion. Christopher Daniels. Uh, man, this is so long ago. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to really relive those days. Jerry Lynn uh, was actually starting to be used in Ring of Honor a little bit. So you got three main cogs of Ring of Honor stories that are being pulled away. CM Punk left TNA to stay with Ring of Honor, which I find that very admirable. But when you lose a lot of guys you know, at, at, at the helm, you, you pull away. You got to rebuild, and you need to build stars fast. And this is why I respect Gabe Sapolsky so much uh, as, a, as a creative force, especially in those days, because when you're trying to make an independent company thrive, and you need, and you got a new owner coming in, and you need to keep fan interest because the company might be spiraling downward because of the incident that happened. So, what do you got to do? You got to build new stars and you got to build them fast. And in professional wrestling, and in more particularly independent wrestling, that is a that that's a very tough task to do. So Gabe Sapolsky, who was who who, who had these do or die shows, you know, pre shows before Ring of Honor big events like in Elizabeth at the Rexplex, and and he's had like you know you have you don't you don't, you don't even really have full impact pro yet, uh, FIP in Florida to really build these stars. So Gabe Sapolsky is trying to work on some ideas, and what does he do? He, he inspires the Generation Next tournament, which was going to be an eight-man tournament, and the winner 
would be the winner in the, do you do your matches and then by fan ballot the winner would be the next star of Ring of Honor well Alex Shelley decided you know what I'm going to do I'm going to take full advantage of this situation and I'm going to hijack the show and he was kind of going through a little bit of a storytelling perspective himself Alex Shelley Austin Aries Jack Evans Roderick Strong these four guys come in uh, they hijacked the show. They beat up the Christopher Street Connection. That's an old school Ring of Honor reference if I've ever heard of one. Destroy Special K. Um, Alex Shelley and Hydro. Uh, Jay Lethal, ladies and gentlemen. They get into a great little chain match. Let's do the damn thing, Hydro. I say that because of this event and Alex Shelley. And then they start beating up guys trying to take their spots. John Walters, Jimmy Rave, and the Briscoes. And then in probably the best eight-man tag of that era, and it was just... Eight young guys trying to prove themselves. Generation Next defeat the Briscoes, Jimmy Rabe, and John Walters. And in one night, Alex Shelley, Austin Aries, Jack Evans, Roderick Strong uh, became big-time players in Ring of Honor. And for the rest of 2004, they ran roughshod. It was chaos with Generation Next doing what they got. The four young studs looking to get to the next level. And then, of course, final battle. Alex Shelley gets excommunicated. He was spending time elsewhere. Austin Aries becomes the leader. Um, Alex Shelley, a talent alone from God. Austin Aries is his personal Jesus. Aries becomes Ring of Honor world champion, and the next generation of Ring of Honor is here. Reborn, far completed, the next generation is here. And then 2005 through 2008, Generation Next, as a group or not as a group, the four guys were stars in the company. And we can't also forget Matt Seidel, who came in in 2000, late 2005, and then instantly started teaming with AJ Styles. Crazy stuff. But the original event, Generation Next, uh, incredible. And in my opinion, uh, one of Gabe Sapolsky's greatest triumphs as a creative direct booker. The last booker of this generation, probably of all time, Gabe Sapolsky. And there's a reason why I really respect Generation Next. Um, when it comes, and I'm on a multitude of levels. First things first, the performers. Alex Shelley, phenomenal talker. Austin Aries, workhorse. Roderick Strong, bruiser. Jack Evans, best high flyer in the business. Four guys put together, and these four guys carried Ring of Honor for quite some time. And yes, Shelley left the group, joined the Emmys, and you started a feud there. But because of this opportunity of Generation Next and the one night hot shot friggin' booking strategy, these four guys became the guys in Ring of Honor. The future is now, and because of this run, look at the careers afterwards. Alex Shelley became one of the greatest tag team wrestlers ever with Chris Sabin with the Motor City Machine Guns. Austin Aries, wrestling journeyman, TNA champion, ROH champion twice over. WWE, the 205 Live, I mean, that match with Neville at WrestleMania 33, awesome. Roderick Strong, Mr. ROH. I'm not the biggest Roderick Strong guy as a performer, but dude's got an insane work ethic, and he's undisputed era. Dude is the bruiser of the era. And Jack Evans, who in my opinion, uh, dude never got the credit he deserves as the best high flyer in the game. I mean, dude, 2005 to 2008, my man was killing it. What time is it? 6.30. Dude, it's a good story with me and Ed's <laughs> A Ring of Honor show in Edison, uh, Inman Sports Club. But these four guys and the talent of these four guys and the drive of these four guys made uh, Ring of Honor a place to watch. And Generation Next, uh, incredible. Incredible stuff, the performers. Second, the fans. The fans bought in right away to these guys. These guys were immensely talented and they saw what they were doing. And because of that, Ring of Honor started getting out of that downward trajectory. That's the right word. I hope so. And they started going right back up creatively. And you get them involved in stories. You can get them involved in in-ring in action and, and the angles and whatnot. Ring of Honor, you can mix it up. Obviously, you got great wrestlers, but you got great storytelling as well. And plus, eight-man tag matches across the circuit. Six-man tags. Roderick Strong and Jack Evans. O to the Bulldogs. Greatest tag move I've ever seen. The fans bought in. The fans loved them. And because of that... The fans deserve all the credit. All the robots out there. ROH bots. And lastly, Gabe Sapolsky. I mean, that's an incredibly risky endeavor to do. I mean, I know you got Samoa Joe and CM Punk and Homicide. Guys you know that are probably going to go to the global level at some point. 
or a mainstream television level get them big contracts. You got to build quick. You got to build fast. And especially with everything going on, you got to stay creative. You got to stay focused. You got to go all in on creative. And you got to be spur of the moment. You got you to gotta try things. You can't be a failure in that regard. Creatively, Gabe Sapolsky went for it. And that's a life lesson uh, when it comes to the best laid plans uh, can't fall apart at any instance. Gabe Sapolsky, as a creative mind, proved he could innovate on the fly and come up with a better idea than what he originally had planned, the long-term plans, the long-term booking plans, that, that binder that Gabe had, Gabe Book of ROH Secrets. Generation Next was that type of idea. And because of that, he spawned four new stars, uh, new fan base in Ring of Honor, and developed a world champion in Austin Aries. That needs to be commended, and that's a life lesson for you guys. No matter what plans you have in your head that you want to do for a year of booking, a month of booking, a couple shows of booking, or even just in life, any, any ideas you have planned, any ideas you have set up, they might fall apart in an instant. Anything can happen. Health issues, uh, life-changing issues. Um, mood change, anything like that, like money moves, like people going elsewhere, getting a better deal. You got to take chances and you got to take risks. And that Generation Next idea, still one of my all-time favorite Ring of Honor shows, DVDs of Honor saga right there. And honestly, Gabe Sapolsky, the four guys, immense credit. And uh, one of the greatest groups in Ring of Honor history, in my opinion, one of the, the, the greatest group in independent wrestling history. And I've never seen anything come close to it because the world of indie wrestling, promotion and promotion and promotion, uh, you don't get that really anymore. So Generation Next, big thumbs up from me. Just a, just a schmuck in the hard way HQ studios. But um, Gabe Sapolsky, Alex Shelley, Austin Aries, Jack Evans, Roderick Strong. Never gets the love it deserves. Generation Next, the greatest thing in, greatest group in Ring of Honor history, wrestling, independent wrestling history, bar none. And uh, I'm just happy to talk about it for a few moments here. So uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to us on Filtered. Um, always stay creative. Never get locked into one idea because if something fails, you'll fall apart. No matter the situation, you got to keep going forward. Got to keep developing. And that's what we're doing here with Hardway HQ, and that's how it relates to Generation Next. Uh, if you think you're going this way, you got to go different paths. So, Generation Next, thumbs up. Uh, my name is John Harder. This is Unfiltered, HardwayHQ.com.